Hi, my name is Madeline and welcome to my Loose Watercolor Mountains Landscape Tutorial. This is the reference photo that we are going to be painting from today. It is last week's Paint Your Style Challenge reference photo and I just love the soft purple pink sky and that beautiful mountainscape with that you know, forest kind of coming in on the left side. This is the list of supplies that I use in today's tutorial. I will be painting with handmade watercolors. And as always, my supplies are just suggestions, so feel free to use whatever you have. Right now, I'm taping down my 100% cotton watercolor paper down to my table with some masking tape. The first thing I want to do after I finish taping this off is to grab my Princeton Neptune flat brush or my Mottler brush and I'm going to be wetting this paper down with water so that we can start with our first background wash which is going to be our sky and starting it off with wet on wet is going to allow us to get this really smooth gradient for our sky. So I'm using my Polina Bright Round 1 brush, but you could use any round brush you like that kind of can hold a little bit more water and paint, or you could also use a mop brush. But I'm going to start with some lavender, and I'm going to start off with the top of our sky because I want the top of our sky to sort of have the most concentrated um, amount of color. And I'm also bringing the lavender down to the bottom because we have a really nice like reflection of the sky in that misty bottom. Now I'm grabbing a very light pink and I'm letting the upper and the lower lavender colors mix. Now I'm grabbing another purple. This is kind of like a watered down dioxazine purple. But I am darkening the bottom because I want that lower valley to be a little bit darker. And now I'm grabbing just a little bit of light blue. And I'm sort of adding some of that blue to the sky above um, that pink wash. And I'm just darkening the pink a little bit more because when we dry this layer, the colors are going to fade just a little bit and I don't want them to get too light. I'm going to wipe off the edges so that when I dry this with my hot air tool, I don't have any water or paint kind of flowing back onto my paper. Now that our first wash is dry, I'm going to start painting the mountains. So this is a, um, it's like a dark indigo. You could use either indigo or Payne's gray. Um, but I want to paint the mountains very loosely. And so what I'm going to do is start by sort of making, um, brush strokes to sort of, um, signal where the little ridges of the mountain are and then I'm going to come in with just a wet brush and I'm going to kind of like soften that line and I want to paint these mountains so that they're not comprised of too many brush strokes. I'm going to drop in some darker indigo right here to sort of um, signify you know texture on the mountain and then um, actually this is a this is a, um, a watered down purple also. And I'm painting the mountain ridge on the left. I'm coming in again with um, just a clean wet brush to soften those lines. And I'm going to drop in some more indigo 
and this is all like wet on wet so you have kind of like that blurring of that darker blue which I really like now I am going to paint the mountain sort of the furthest from us sort of in the background um, and actually this purple that I'm using is um, um, ambience by Stay Kiwi and this is just a really watered down um, purple I'm gonna come in with some more lavender to sort of add um, some depth to that valley Um, now I'm going to use a little bit of coral and I'm just going to make some really light brush strokes right above the left mountain range. And this is just to give um, it a little bit more color. Now I'm going to use the pink that we um, painted the middle section of our sky with and I'm gonna grab a little bit of um, like a light blue and I'm gonna outline the mountain range on the right And then we are going to dry this layer. Now I'm going to grab some white gouache and I'm going to dry brush just a little bit of white to the mountain tops since I don't have any white from the paper preserved or anything from masking fluid. Um, if you want, you could also just take some masking fluid and mask off. Um, some of the paper before painting your mountains um, but I didn't so I'm just gonna dry brush some white to give the illusion of snow and then now I'm gonna use some of that um, purple ambience color and um, I'm gonna just sort of add some darkness to the mountains to give it a little bit more texture and so yeah, this is just a dark purple, um, but yeah, I'm just adding some darkness to create depth in the mountains. So I think the hardest part of this landscape for me was creating like the shadows in sort of like that the valley of the like between the two mountains sort of right above where that mist is. And sorry, I forgot to mention, um, the brush I'm using is a round six by Silver Brush Limited, their Renaissance line. It's, um, I think, real Kalinsky hair, and it's just like softer, so I can get softer brush strokes than a synthetic brush. Um, I just kind of blurred the edge um, of the bottom to sort of create that mist. So I'm about to add some white gouache to the bottom of the mountains to sort of create that 
misty, um, foggy feeling, but I end up really not liking what I did. So I'm just going to, I'm leaving this here just to like show you guys that, you know, even I test things out and it doesn't look good and I end up sort of like erasing it. Um, I don't want you to think that whenever I paint, you know, it looks perfect like right away. Um, I didn't like this at all. I was trying to achieve some like light in that misty area, but I don't feel like the white gouache really did it. It didn't look good to me. So at the very end, I kind of rub it out. Um, you'll see me take some paper towels and pick up all this paint, but I'm leaving it in just to show you that even I, you know, have lots of experimentation that just doesn't pan out the way I want it to. So now I'm going to dry this layer. And now we're going to paint the trees on the bottom in the foreground. So I'm using my tree brush. It's just a smashed up brush that I use to paint trees. And I'm just sort of blocking out some of where the trees are. And you sort of only just see like the tree tops. And I'm also trying to add a little bit more color to that um, little shadow area in between the mountains. The bane of my existence for this piece. <laughs> so I'm just adding some color here and then I'm coming in with a wet brush to blur the hard lines. And now we're gonna start painting the trees. So this is like a really cheap brush um, that I got off of Timu, which is kind of like a, I don't wanna say it's like a dollar store quality, but it's just like a really cheap brush. And I'm not even sure what shape it is. It's kind of like a liner brush. It's like a little bit longer, um, the brush hairs. Actually, I go, I go one size smaller because I feel like that one was a little bit too thick. Um, and my paper is wet just like a little bit, so I'm just going to dab this off. And I'm going to dry this a tiny bit more so that I can get finer lines. And so to paint these trees, I'm basically painting um, the line for the trunk and I'm using a very fine brush to sort of paint the tree branches and the pine trees or the trees, the, the silhouette of trees in this reference photo, the branches sort of like angle upwards. Um, so I'm trying to get kind of like the essence of these trees. And to sort of vary these trees, I'm going to paint this one a little bit more sparse so that it looks like um, a little bit more, like not every tree looks the same.
So I like how that looks and I'm going to add some finishing touches by just painting um, a very small flock of birds in the way distance. So I mentioned earlier how I didn't like what I did with the white wash earlier, so I'm just taking a wet wipe and I'm just sort of getting rid of um, what I did with the white wash. And I feel like that sort of makes that area of the mountain a little bit darker and I like how that looks better. And that is our landscape. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me. If you liked this tutorial, please hit the like button. It's a really small way to help my channel grow. And if you enjoy my content, use the following QR codes to either find me on Patreon or Instagram.